Good morning, everyone. My name is Marlena Centeno, and I'll be your host for this webinar. Uh, my heart is heavy actually coming to you today from the United States of America. Um, currently, we're in a fight against systematic injustice and racism against the African American community in this country. This webinar is about parents and children, and we all have fear about losing our children. But in America, if you are a Black parent like myself, we have a unique fear of losing our children to senseless injustice and violence in the hands of those meant to protect you. On top of that, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, and we are being shaken as a nation, as nations, um, and America is being shaken from the slumber of um, racism that persists. And I know many of you are joining us from around the world and you also have had your own racial conflicts in your context. I know that you grieve with us, you mourn with us, and we thank you. We know that we're not alone in fighting injustice. And I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart, from your support from around the world Jesus sees you, we see you, and we know that we're not alone. Uh, and again, in the midst of all this, the coronavirus pandemic continues to affect people around the world with closures of schools and isolation from friends and loved ones, families and children. There are unique pressures and produce feelings of loss, uncertainty, and anxiety. We know that many of you have encountered these struggles as you care for your own children or minister to parents. This webinar will focus specifically on the needs of children and their parents during the pandemic. Though hearing from a panel of experts and parents, we will explore how trauma healing facilitators can support positive coping during difficult times and learn skills that will help us all calm ourselves and others. As always, our webinar will allow you to share your ideas in the chat. I see many of you signing on in the chat. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for saying hello. Um, and uh, the, after the session, this will be record. This whole time will be recorded, and you will get a link um, for the recording so that you can share or rewatch again. Um, so again, I see many of you joining. Thank you so much for chatting in where you're from. I see that you are praying for us and that you support us. I see you from Michigan. I see you from Northern Ireland. I see you from West Africa and Zimbabwe and Ukraine and Puerto Rico. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Um, allow me to introduce you to our, uh, our guest this morning. Um, first, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Phil Monroe. He's psychologist and team leader of the, of the trauma healing team at American Bible Society. Welcome, Phil. We also have, yeah, we also have with us Pastor Kim Gegner. Pastor Kim is pastor at New Hope Ministries in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, she's also the executive director of New Hope Christian Academy. Kim is a certified classic, generational, and children's trauma healing and she's facilitated groups in the COVID-19 trauma healing resources. She is a wealth of wisdom and we're really grateful to have her here. Welcome, Kim. We also have Father Claude Nonis. Father Claude is a Catholic priest for the Archdiocese of Colombo, Sri Lanka. I did see many of you joining from Sri Lanka, so welcome, where he has served for the past 23 years. Father Claude also works as the director of the Archdiocese, Archdiocese Family Apostolate and the coordinator of the National Family Apostolate in Sri Lanka. Welcome from Sri Lanka, Father Claude. And lastly, but certainly not least, we have Victoria Reichenitz. She's the trauma healing coordinator at the Ukrainian Bible Society. She's joining us from Ukraine and she coordinates all the trauma healing activity in her, uh, in her country. She is the trauma healing master facilitator as well as the leader of the Hope from the Heart Hope from Heart to Heart program, which ministers to neglected children and young people. Uh, welcome, Victoria. Um, and at the end, we want to make sure that you stick around to the very end. We have a special guest joining us to close out our time, which I know that you all know this woman and love her. And so we want to make sure that you um, get to experience that at the end. 
So Phil, Dr. Phil, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let's get started with interviewing our guests. Welcome everyone. It is so great to be with you again. And thank you, Marlena, for the introduction and the reminder of the situation that we find ourselves in and the pressures and the struggle against injustice and the need to listen and support, especially young children and their families as they go through all of these things together. So, Pastor Kim, welcome. Um, I'd like to start with you first. Um, this webinar planning is really to focus on um, what are the unique challenges that young children and their parents are facing, both in the pandemic and, of course, in your context, in our context here in the United States, this added pressure that's always been there but has become more apparent. So tell us, what are some of the unique challenges that you are seeing in your context? Well, we certainly are in uh, the midst of a perfect storm um, with the pandemic and young people uh, being having to be closed to schools and they had to be home. And home is not safe for every child. Um, food supply is not uh, plentiful for every child. Then with the added financial pressures that their parents are going through, and um, so the children also had to witness their, their parents being very stressed out and just not knowing what to do. And then this added uh, in recent days race issues. It's just been a lot. So I'm a teacher and um, academics, you know, thankfully we, our classes were over at the end of last week, but we just had to just stop and have days where we just would get on. And I'm so thankful for the Trauma Healing Institute's uh, curriculum because I was able to use it, um, the COVID-19 materials with parents. I was able to use it with the children. Um, and we were able to just kind of process all that was going on. We were able to even do some yesterday. So it's been a lot. Um, they're fearful, parents and children. Um, and just unsure, seniors are very disappointed. Um, graduations have been suspended. They've moved online. So a lot of our rites of passage have to be, have to be changed. It's just a lot. I mean, I don't know if I can give it justice in just a couple minutes. No, it is a lot. And you are hitting on so many things from food shortages to lack of schooling to not, the rites of passages, which have had to be stopped. Uh, those are big. And we'll come back for some more. Victoria, in your context in Ukraine, tell us about some of the unique challenges that children and parents are facing there. Um, yes, we are in Ukraine uh, in many ways uh, very similar with the rest of the world. Uh, but additionally, we uh, have a very poor financial uh, situation in, in the country at all. And um, uh, unfortunately, uh, for the family as, as an institute who, who is not used to spend time at all in our countries, uh, in our country, people just don't spend time together as a family. They don't go for a walk. They don't go bicycling. They're, they're just different institutions, parents and children, because uh, after Soviet Union times, in our mentality of majority of the families, uh, there is an understanding that uh, schools have to raise your children, government have to raise your children. And that's why we don't have a tradition to spend time together in the families. And here we are locked up, uh, a lot of stress of, from this, uh, plus uh, no financial support at all. And uh, uh, a lot of uh, families uh, not just don't have uh, helpful support, they lose income they even had. So the majority of the families started uh, having problems uh, with finances, plus they are locked up with children. Kids are scared to be at home and um, all this brings up a lot of uh, a lot of fear and a lot of problems. Thank you. And you know, you raise a good point and I'll, Father Claude, I'll ask you to weigh in on this as well, which is when families are together in ways that they aren't normally, it can create a whole lot of pressure. Um, Father Claude, what are you seeing in your context uh, in Colombo and Sri Lanka about the unique challenges, not only due to the pandemic, but also because there has been tensions 
and violence there as well, even a year ago with your Easter bombings. Uh, thank you, Phil. Uh, uh, for a few uh, months, uh, people had to live uh, uh, in their respective families uh, without much uh, social contact. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, parents and elders had to be mentally, emotionally, and physically well uh, in order to help their children, to cater to the needs of their children. Parents, now uh, we understand, uh, had to be very careful uh, uh, about the news, that to watch news not all the time. And uh, we know it was our experience after the Easter Sunday disaster. Now, when we speak of the Easter Sunday disaster that took place on 21st April uh, 2019, and uh, bombs exploded almost at the same time in three churches and three hotels. And that toll rose to 264 and uh, 534 people got injured. And um, after this, regarding this Easter Sunday disaster, uh, uh, state had to impose curfew in the whole island, and all the churches were closed. And though some expected an ethnic conflict within the country among the communities, nothing, almost nothing, took place, mainly because of the timely in, uh, intervention of His Eminence Man Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, and. Uh, Still today, after one year, we as Christians, yeah, we are not happy that it is not clear as to who did it and all who did it. And also some suspects uh, have been apprehended, uh, a court case is going on, um, uh, and people uh, who have been the victims of the Easter Sunday disaster, uh, they are finding it very difficult to cope up with this COVID-19. And after this uh, COVID-19 came into being, uh, we found uh, that people got traumatized and terrified much more. We had to, you know, uh, even send some of the psychiatrists and we had to contact them and try to intervene also. But we know for sure that no one contracted the disease. But the fear, fear led them to trauma and tension. And uh, uh, th this happens after exactly one year. And this has been a challenge for our communities in Sri Lanka. Yeah. yeah. Fear upon fear, trauma upon trauma. Sure. Uh, Pastor Kim, you said a perfect storm of things. Um, can we talk just a moment about, you know, we were in the pandemic and now we have the unknown of what's happening in our country and in our cities. What are some of the unique challenges parents are having talking about these things with their children about what's happening, especially young children? So um, I feel like this time has reopened wounds. Um, it's funny how when things go quiet, um, we kind of go about like, oh, it's back to quote normal, whatever normal is. And then, um, but, but the, the traumas are being compounded in there and we press them down until it looks like this time we just, we just couldn't anymore. So one of the unique challenges parents are having is that they're dealing with so much of their own feelings um, and their own uh, grief. Um, and it's been very difficult to talk to our children without exhibiting that grief um, um, and anger. So, but of course we don't want to see our youth um, walking around with misguided anger and no place to go. So one, another challenge is trying to, to be a model of the appropriate response when you're, when you're feeling so many things yourself. So that's one of the things that I've spoken with many parents that they're dealing with is like how do they not contain, how do they lament, we've openly um, express their anger, but in ways that doesn't do damage or, or, or overly traumatize their, their children. So, so having to deal with our own stuff while we parent our kids. That's right, that's right. And there's no uh, rule book on this, on how to do it as well, right? Right. I, I think what you're 
pointing to as well is in our trauma healing materials when we talked about a physical wound we talked about that surface healing but the underlying mm -hmm. uh infection is still there uh mm -hmm. so important to bring out victoria um your country not only has going through the pandemic but has also had its own experiences with threats of war experiences of war in the east especially of ukraine uh, are you seeing also this layer upon layer of trauma with families and their children? Definitely. I think uh, for our country, it's just layering and layering and layering. And that's why um, we're not used to deal with the problems. Stacks or um, keeps more and more. Uh, adding the this uh, trauma, pain, and uh, helplessness. Um, I also can say that additionally to um, <clears throat> uh, to the families that they're not used to uh, stay together. Uh, I can say additionally that uh, in 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 our uh, surrounding between children and parents became a big uh, problem is school. It might uh, look uh, funny, but unfortunately, it's a, it's a big problem for us because uh, with the pandemic, uh, uh, schools uh, put uh, all the education on parents and uh, it made uh, just more uh, anger, basically, because parents don't know how to do this. They are not, uh, uh, they don't have patience for this. And if you will stop, uh, any Ukrainian on the street right now and ask them what is the problem number one they will tell money finances because basically they don't have what to eat second is school between <laughs> between them and children so a lot of um, areas in Ukraine they don't even have uh, enough uh, good enough internet connection that's why people uh, can't uh, stay um, tuned basically they can't uh, do their uh, teaching through online or something like this and additionally to what uh, pastor kim said uh, when they are having their own problems so much and additionally the school problem makes all the emotions all the uh, everything they're going through just explode you know and that's why in uh, unfortunately in our country uh, we we have uh, grouped up uh, crime and home abuse both, um, so that's that's a big problem. That's a big problem. Additionally, unfortunately, the war has not stopped, and uh, it's still going. And uh, every day, wounded new people, uh, died people, and um, that's why it makes them very um, difficult. Sure. So we, we see wars in all of these three contexts that you're in, but I want to highlight the, one of the ones that you just raised up a minute ago and ask Father Claude to speak to it too. When we are dealing with our own pain and our own layers of trauma, and we are in tight quarters with our families, it's a recipe for domestic abuse to grow. Father Claude, are you seeing anything like that happening in Sri Lanka, or are you hearing about some of those challenges as well? Uh, thank you, Phil. Actually, uh, domestic uh, violence uh, has been a problem, and uh, we find this uh, this uh, reality in dysfunctional families, uh, where uh, roles of the motherhood and the fatherhood have not been comprehended uh, uh, in a proper perspective. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, father and the mother they are uh, not uh, actually doing their duties towards their children. They have not understood their vocation. Uh, and in these dysfunctional families, um, father or mother or uh, children, they try to go on their own way. And uh, the relationships uh, uh, within the family is not that intact and it's not according to uh, the plan of the Lord. So uh, this uh, pandemic in any way kept them together in the family. Sometimes we find 
because we have to do so many online uh, counseling uh, counseling and sometimes uh, people got distanced much more because of this pandemic and on the other hand there are some other cases in which people also understood their own inadequacies and imperfections and they tried to also uh, rectify their weaknesses and improve their relationships so uh, this is something uh, uh, we can say is a blessing in disguise and a couple relationships you know have got strengthened and and also they have devoted their time for their children and also uh, children also have been able to spend time more with their mother and the father sometimes father is very busy and he doesn't have time for their uh, ch for his children therefore in this situation uh, this is uh, this has happened and we are happy about it thank you father claude yeah I'm saying, yeah i'm just wanting to report what's happening in the chat there's I see 374 of you are on here watching with us. So thanks for joining us. Um, but a lot of a lot of parents, a lot of facilitators in the in the chat are just agreeing that in their context, they're also seeing domestic and child abuse going up. A lot of frustration with trying to school their children, and a lot of resources that they don't have, food and finances. So this is not just distinct to. Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or Sri Lanka, or Ukraine, this is happening all over the world right now. And so uh, we're not alone. We're all in this together. So for those of you that are just now joining us, I just want to remind you, this is the Trauma Healing Institute webinar, where we are specifically talking about uh, challenges of parents and children uh, relationships in, in this course of this pandemic. Um, and specifically in the U.S. context, we're dealing with injustice happening in our nation. And there's uh, 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 Pastor Kim has stated that there's um, trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma. Victoria has also said the same thing is happening in her context. There's just layers and layers and layers of trauma. And we see that happening all over the world. And so we're talking about the challenges. We've just discussed some of the challenges. And I know Phil is going to lead us into the time of like, well, what do we do? <laughs> How do we deal with these things? So if you have questions for the panelists, again, Pastor Kim is coming to us from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Father Claude is in Sri Lanka and Victoria is in Ukraine. If you have questions for any of these panelists, please um, ask that in the chat and we'll be sure to, to try to answer those as we can. Yes, um, this is a huge problem and we do want to turn to what can we do as facilitators? How can we support the resilience and the coping for young children and their families. Um, we know it's a task too big for us. We thank, we're thank we thankful that we have a big God, right? And yet he gives us small things that we can do. So I would like to turn to that right now. And Victoria, I think I'll start with you. Um, as you think about some of the small ways that facilitators might be able to support children or family, whether they can do it face-to-face, -face, whether they can do it online, WhatsApp, maybe you can tell us a couple of things that you are noticing that have been helpful um, in your context. Yes, thank you so much. It's uh, probably the most important question we are talking about, uh, how, how to help, what to do, and uh, um, all this already depends on the context of the country. and. Uh, in uh, my country, uh, people need actual physical, financial help, first of all. And before we can't answer their physical needs, if we cannot answer their physical, physical needs, they don't want even to listen to you or to talk to you. So, plus additionally, people were terrified uh, of European um, pandemic. Uh, extremely it was very big you know it and uh, uh, most of our people were scared uh, because uh, our level of uh, medicine in Ukraine is is comparatively to Europe or uh, or America it's absent so and uh, people were afraid uh, of this very much they don't want to meet with people they uh, um, they want to uh, stay at home 
but at the same time, they need uh, physical help. So that's why the, the number one thing that we were doing is just buying groceries, uh, special packages of groceries and delivering food for, for the families, for, for the children food, sometimes even clothes, but mainly food because it's not, not so long. And this is the first, uh, first uh, aid that um, opens a little key to the rest of the help. After that, you are able to start a conversation. You are able to start a dialogue. And uh, this way, after you have a little hook to, to the person, you can start talking to them. And uh, usually, Everything that is connected uh, with uh, pain, fear, uh, in our uh, culture, people don't, uh, don't trust uh, new technology. They want to be one-on-one. -on -one. They want, want to see your eyes and uh, hear your hand on, on the shoulder. And that's why um, after this, if it's possible, we start small meetings with uh, people one-on-one -on -one because uh, through Zoom or WhatsApp, it didn't work. Uh, people would just close up and be more fearful, not trusting anybody because it's, um, uh, it's so sensitive. Yes. Thank you, thank you. So taking care of basic needs that people have, physical needs and starting to listen to them. Pastor Kim, um, can you give us some practical things that you have seen helpful for children and families in your context? Yes, uh, felt needs definitely is one of the things that we had to do, particularly with food. I would say second to that is just providing support for parents. Um, again, coming from my teacher uh, perspective, the parents were at a loss as to what to do. And so um, spending a lot of time on the phone, um, helping them help their, their young people, spending a lot of time tutoring one-on-one, -on -one, even outside of uh, the class. So um, definitely helping parents and then even counseling them a little bit how to, um, it's funny, they know their children, parents know their children, but teachers know them in a different way um, and how to get them motivated to learn and things like that. Um, where parents were kind of at a loss, so helping in that way. And then finally, just preaching routine, routine, routine. That is something that um, is hugely important. It seems so simple, and it's like, why would we, um, you know, what, what, what does it matter? But it absolutely does matter, the proper diet, fresh air, exercise, um, sleep, sleep. Okay, those things really do um, matter. So we just kind of stress that over and over. Routines, and I want to highlight the one you said earlier, just briefly, so we don't miss it. Is even managing how often you're, and how much you are taking that in, because how much that your children are taking in as well. So making even a routine mm -hmm. about that. Yes. Good, Father Claude. What are some things that you are seeing helpful responses that help children and their families uh, in Sri Lanka? Yeah. Now uh, we understand. Uh, we need to come to terms with this pandemic. Uh, we can't wait till the moment that is going to disappear. So we have to get ready to live in this pandemic. Therefore, let us not deny it or panic over it. This is very important. And also, um, parents have to be uh, well educated and in the sense stuck as to uh, as to what they need to know regarding the pandemic. And also in their uh, familial setup, uh, they can reestablish routines in the family uh, with their uh, children. And also regarding uh, watching uh, news, they need to watch news less. Otherwise, children get traumatized. And also regarding the uh, immunity, uh, you know, they say immunity is weakened by always staying in sterile environment. Even if we get eat immunity boosting foods, we need to go regularly out of our house to maybe to any park or to beach and to spend time there. 
immunity is increased by our exposure to causative factors of this spread of this disease. Therefore, not just by sitting at home, but they need to go out and to yeah, be in that environment, natural environment. And also, we find that uh, to children, we need to tell the truth in simple terms. And we need to be honest in our conversation with our children. Maybe younger children uh, uh, can express their feelings you know, through their play activities and also as they do play therapy, music therapy. So we need to teach uh, our parents also regarding such activities. And as a family, it is always uh, encouraged to pray together, to read the scriptures together, and also share the life experiences together as they share a meal. And also here, I would like to stress Fathers need to spend time with their children, just playing with their children, just playing, doing nothing. And it matters a lot for our children. And also asking open-ended questions uh, from our children and to listen to them as to what they have got to say and to listen to them. And also uh, the ways that they can protect themselves and also as to what they can do to protect others. And also, lastly, I would like to stress about the close conversations that we can have with our children. And as they share their uh, experiences, as they share their innermost feelings, parents need to listen to them, their body language, and also their tone of voice and as to how they breathe. And when we do that, yes, we are helping our children. And also before helping our children, we need to help ourselves as well as parents and elders. Well, that is a lot, Father Claude, and all very, very good. Playing with our children, listening to them, taking care of ourselves, reading the scriptures, praying. If we could do a bit of those, we would be certainly doing better. Marlena, I'm wondering if you're seeing any questions or even recommendations coming in from the field. Yeah, the, what I am seeing is lots of questions, and I'll get to those in a second, but just uh, the audience is really grateful for all of your practical suggestions from providing food um, and support to parents and just the simple playing. And, and I love what you said, Father Claude, about listening. Um, I heard listening, not just with our ears, about breathing, and, but also listening with our eyes. How, you know, what does their faces look like? How are their body, what's their body language like? I so appreciated that. Thank you all so much for that practical, uh, practical advice. Um, one of the questions that I got was, what can help kids when the parents are depressed? Um, and so we'd love to hear um, from anyone who wants to jump in. What can help the, the kids when the parents are depressed and going through their own uh, traumatic reoccurrences in their lives? Pastor Kim, would you like to uh, weigh in? Sure. Um, that's why it's so important for um, facilitators to walk alongside the families that we know um, so that 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 speaking the truth to um, children and letting them know, depending on their age, that, you know, their parents are sad or their parents are upset and um, just, you know, but you are still loved. It's not your fault. Um, you know, what can we do to help? Um, but just being that support, walking alongside um, the family and listening to a young person um, share what's on their heart. And we did this yesterday and it's, Sometimes they're not quite sure uh, with words. And so games, is, um, wisely structured, that is really important to, to get young people to loosen up and to begin to explore their feelings. So, um, yeah, just being, just being available to them and a trusted adult, someone else that they can listen to and talk to, forging those relationships, that's really important, particularly all the time, but particularly in times like these. Pastor Kim, maybe you could go just a step further with that. You've, you've mentioned a couple of things you have done, I think, in the online area with children and families. Just give us a couple of snippets about what you're doing there. Well, we've done some work with um, 
teens, a lot, uh, actually quite a bit of work with teens running from as young as 12 to as old as 18. Um, just using um, the, the, the trauma healing material that's already available and taking them through it, um, uh, helping them to get in touch with their feelings, helping them to recognize um, that sometimes what they pick up from other people is not always what that person might be experiencing. So just giving them practical insights on how to navigate being in close quarters with others. We've done a lot of work with that. Um, and just exploring where is God in all of this. Um, particularly the older teens in this last few weeks really shaken in their faith. Um, and so just listening without, um, which is not always easy for me, I'm a preacher, but um, just being able to listen to their struggles with faith and, you know, where is God? And there's one exercise where um, in the COVID-19 where you draw, like, where is God in all of this? That's been huge. And then listening to the scripture in Romans 8, and then again, trying that, that art again. And just, you know, just being there to watch them through the journey. So we've been online with teens. We've been online with adults. We've been online with the pastors, uh, helping them to navigate in their churches. So, yeah, we've done a lot. <laughs> Fantastic. Just Thank listening. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, this is really important. The scriptures do validate our expressions of pain. And that's something mm -hmm. that we're still coming to terms with, right, as adults. But we can help our children as well understand that, no, God actually accepts and invites our expressions of pain and in there meets us in that. Marlena, do you have one more question? It's so hard to choose just one more, but um, I will say um, there, there are still a lot of comments. Um, there's several from the US context. And so I will bring this question to the forefront again. Um, what do we, um, how do parents talk to their children about real danger? So we've got disease and racism without scarring them and traumatizing them. So I heard Father Claude say, be honest, talk to them, but how do we do that in a practical way that doesn't traumatize them? Any thoughts on that? Maybe Father Claude will ask you, we have about a minute before we will transition to some other things, but maybe you can give us some advice for how parents can talk to children about the real dangers and also give them comfort at the same time. Yeah. Now, when we speak to children uh, regarding any uh, any disaster, any danger, we need to think of their age. Now, according to the age of the child, so the parents need to decide as to what to be told and what not to be told. This is very important. Therefore, the parents know the mental capacity of the child. So parents under the guidance of the Holy Spirit need to decide that and be in God experience and the God will help her, her or him to do it. Therefore, this is very important. Actually, uh, we should not also overload our children with things which are not appropriate as well. But we need to be honest in, in communicating to them what is needed. Therefore, uh, that uh, guidance of the Spirit is needed in this context very much. Thank you. You're so right. And one way that we can get that guidance, I saw uh, coming up on the chat myself, was that when we ask our children questions, we can find out what they are struggling with because it might be different. Remember our third question, what's been the hardest part that we ask yes. each other? When we do that, we may actually find a surprise about what's bothering our children in a way that we weren't aware of. Father Claude, Pastor Kim, Victoria, I am so grateful for each of you and what you're doing, and I'm thankful for your willingness to participate in this webinar. We're not finished, and please stick around, but um, we thank you for your part in sharing what's going on in your communities, and we pray for Colombo, Sri Lanka. We pray for um, the Philadelphia area in, in the United States. We pray for what's happening in Ukraine. May the Lord um, be with you in your work. Marlena, I know we have a special guest coming and some in things. Can you uh, take us there? Yeah, thank you all so much again. 
If you guys could thank them in the chat, they would love to see that. They're watching, they're, they're not leaving. <laughs> they're just gonna join us in the chat. And so uh, next up, we actually have a special guest, Dr. Margie McCombs, which many of you know her as our children and teens expert. She's the director of children and teens program for American Bible Society. And if you have uh, worked in our children's trauma healing or our teens trauma healing, you know Dr. Margie McCombs. And so she's going to lead us in a special exercise um, as we transition to this next session. So Dr. Margie, take it away. Thank you, Marlena. Hey, it's so good to be with all of you guys today. I am thrilled to see all your names on the chat and see friends from around the world that are joining us today. Um, before we get to our exercise, I want to just mention a little bit about uh, what has already been referenced, our COVID-19 response booklet for children, for families with young children called uh, Peace Be Still. Yes, this is specifically designed uh, to be used by families or caregivers, caregivers with young children. It starts with a story about a brother and a sister who are struggling with the interruptions in their lives, their strong feelings that they're, their fears, their worries, and so on, um, living with a single mom. And uh, it, it's a great story. Then that story is followed uh, by discussion questions. And so then it goes to five more sections in this booklet um, that carry uh, ideas for fun activities and uh, conversations that help kids understand that they have lost a lot and that their anger and their sadness is part of grieving about those losses. And it helps them uh, have conversations with their parents and caregivers so that they can open up their feelings and express those in, in appropriate ways. Then it moves to a story, the classic story of Jesus calming the storm. Uh, and he speaks to each of us, peace, be still. And it talks about um, how children can learn to call on Jesus when they have this, the emotional storms of fear and worry and anger and frustration, and that the whole family can call on Jesus to calm that storm in their family. Then at the very end, it takes the family through an exercise where they're able to bring their worries and their fears to the cross, much like our pain to the cross in our trauma healing programs. This brings their fears and their worries to Jesus. So it's a wonderful resource. I hope that you'll use it and I hope that you will recommend it to your families, and I hope you will uh, find it on our Trauma Healing website. If you haven't seen our new website, please visit. It's really pretty cool, um, but go to the resources and find this resource and use it. We would love to have your feedback as well. So we have been living with this pandemic for several months now. How are you holding up? We know that the families that are in our ministries are struggling, but maybe you're a family that is struggling as well. If you're living with young children, then for several months, you have been their primary source for entertainment. You have helped them with school. You have been feeding them regularly. I feel like I've been cooking nonstop. I don't even have young children anymore, but because we can't do anything else, we're feeding, we're eating a lot of food. We're, you're managing their behavior, you're playing with them, you're spending time with them. And many of you are still working full time from home or you're carrying on your ministries as best you can. So how are you feeling right now? You might be exhausted right now. Can I ask you right now to just turn off your camera so that uh, we can really focus on, on the next several minutes on what the Lord wants to teach us and show us about his grace and about how his, he's working in our lives. I want you to take a minute and write down words or share in the chat that describe how you're feeling about the time that you've been spending home with your children or with the children in your lives. Maybe you've loved it. Maybe you have had a great time. Maybe it's been wonderful to reconnect with them at different levels. Maybe you've been watching them play, you've been able to enter into that and that has been really a great experience and enriching experience for your family. But maybe you feel like a failure. 
Maybe there have been times when you've come to the end of your energy, to the end of your patience, to the end of your ideas, to the end of your rope. And you have acted out in a moments that you regret now. And that has made you feel like a failure. That does not make you a bad parent. What that does is shows that you're human, that you are made of dust. We know that God has great compassion on our humanity. He says in Psalm 103 that he has compassion on his children. He has compassion to those, I'm reading, to those who fear him, for he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. I'd like you to just close your eyes and think about how God parents you. You are his precious child. You are loved unconditionally. You are known intimately. He knows your moods. He knows you're tired. He knows when you're at the end of your rope. He sees you and he knows you and he loves you no matter what. Open your eyes and find your paper if you want to do that. And uh, as you think about God as your perfect parent, write down some words that describe his parenting style. Share them on the chat so we can learn from each other and be inspired by each other and be encouraged by each other. Think about how does God comfort you in the middle of your stress and fear and the frustration that you have felt and the fatigue that you have felt. When you just want to quit and you climb up on God's lap and you beat on his chest and he holds you tight until you've come to the end of your frantic feelings, he carries you and allows you to just rest in his presence and find his grace that is ultimately sufficient. How does he provide for you in your weakness? Take some moments right now. We're going to take some silence, moments of silence, as you draw whatever images or words that come to mind that express this sweet relationship that you have with God as your perfect parent. You may be feeling so discouraged and so sad and maybe depressed from the situation that we are in right now that you may feel that God is really distant from you, that he has forgotten you. Let's remember that those are normal feelings. And let's remember that God is there as the sun goes behind the cloud. It is gone for a moment and the storms come and we can't see. Let's remember that the sun is still there, that God is there and he does hear you and he does see you 
and he does love you. This, this is how God parents us. This is how he walks with us. This is how he nurtures us. And by his spirit and filled with his spirit, we can reflect that character to the children around us. We can pray that Christ be formed in us. We can pray that Christ be formed in our children. We just celebrated Pentecost. The idea that, and the reality, that God sent his spirit to dwell within us. And as we are on this webinar all around the world, we can celebrate that there are three main gifts that God has given to us, to his children, to his church. He has given us his spirit that unites us, the same spirit that unites us from Ukraine to Sri Lanka to Colombia to Kuwait, to all of the places that we are seeing around the world on our chat today. He has given us his spirit, but he has also given us his word, his mighty word that we can draw encouragement from and that we can encourage one another with. And the third gift that he has given us is each other. He's given us his people. Stay in touch with your people. Stay in touch with each other. Reach out. Don't be afraid to, take, to call your friend and say, I can't take this anymore. I need somebody to just listen to me. And then you listen to them. His spirit and his word and his people are great gifts. We all fall short. What I used to do with my kids when we had a rough day, either because they lost their cool or I would lose mine, I'd try to end the day with, this was a rough day, wasn't it? We'll try again tomorrow. God's mercies and grace are new every morning, you guys. He will help us get through this. And remember, I love you no matter what. May God bless you all and strengthen you by his spirit to do the work he has given you to do with his children. Amen. Hey, Marlena, what are you seeing from the chat? Amen. Well, I almost forgot that I have to come back on because you're so calming and soothing, Margie. Thank you so much um, for leading us in that exercise. Um, so your first question was, how do you feel about being at home with your children? And there were lots of mixed feelings from um, joy to overwhelmed to angry, excited, restless, displaced, anxious, and stressed. Um, not well but also loving um, being home. So lots of ranges of ex expression and emotion. Um, and then Margie's next question was, um, how do you feel that God is, is with you during this time? Where is God? And there were so many responses. Again, wide ranges of emotions from near to distant, to silent, to he is with me. Um, he is patient and loving and kind and generous and gracious. And it was beautiful just to see all the chats come in. Again, I'm just constantly overwhelmed that there's such a wide range of people watching all over the world, but we all have this commonality in um, how we might be feeling. And it's beautiful. And it reminds us that we are not alone and God is not afraid of our deep emotions. He is actually very near. Um, so thank you. Thank you for participating in that. Thank you, Dr. Margie, for leading us. Thank you again to all of our panelists. Um, but before you jump off today, I do wanna go over a few action items, some things that you can do practically to further what you've learned here today. So first, if you could just take the post-webinar survey, once you X out of this uh, webinar, you will get a survey. If you can take that and let us know what's working on these webinars, what's not working, um, what do you want to hear from us next time around? We'd love to hear that from you. We serve you. And so when you tell us what you need, we want to make sure that we meet that need. Um, you can access the, be, the Peace Be Still, Beyond Disaster, and all the COVID materials at the traumahealinginstitute.org slash resources. We have a new website, um, and we're really excited about it. And so if you haven't visited the new website, please check it out, traumahealinginstitute.org 
and you'll find all of the resources from the children's resources to the Beyond Disasters and the COVID resources there on the website. Um, and lastly, you can follow us on social media. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, please make sure that you follow us. And if you um, want to get the first access to this webinar and all of our previous webinars and resources, you can subscribe to our YouTube page. That way you'll get an email to let you know when all of the new uh, webinars are posted there. And so again, we just want to say thank you um, for joining us today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, don't know where to find something, you can always email us at info at traumahealinginstitute.org. And I actually received those emails. I love hearing how this, uh, these webinars impacted you. So please email us at info at traumahealinginstitute.org. Um, and I just wanna pray a scripture over you, if you can join me. First Matthew eleven twenty eight. it says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And then lastly, Psalm 131 in the Passion Translation, it says, Lord, my heart is meek before you. I don't consider myself better than others. I'm content not to pursue matters that are over my head, such as your complex mysteries and wonders that I'm not ready yet to understand. I am humbled and quieted in your presence, like a contented child who rests on its mother's lap. I am your resting child, and my soul is content in you. O oh, people of God, your time has come to quietly trust, waiting upon the Lord now and forever. Jesus, we thank you for the promise that when we come to you, you will give us rest. When we come heavy and burdened and not sure what to do or where to go or how to manage all these emotions and the people that are surrounding us, our children and our parents and our community and injustice, God, we don't know what to do, but God, we know that when we come to you, you promise to give us rest. God, make us like that contented child in a mother's lap, resting. Give us rest and peace for the rest of this day and show us what we need to do next. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you next time.